stand. I want to see your face again. And we're back with episode 8.6 of Monday Night Frights. Tonight we're talking about Dario Argento's classic 1987 Giallo. It's opera! opera. No. Opera. <laughs> opera. Opera. Phantom? Uh, no, a Night no in the Opera. There's no a phantoms day. in this opera. There's not. Though I did, there was a couple of times. There's a lot of ravens, though. There was a wild lot of ravens. A whole, a whole, what do you, a murder? A murder of ravens. <laughs> There's I been know. a murder. Is there no, a murder of crows. It's, it's murder of crows, isn't it? But is a group of ravens also called a murder? Know. Or is that different? I don't know. Let us know in the comments below. Let us know in the comments. We'll figure yeah. it out and we'll tell you at the end of the episode. So stay tuned to the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a reason to stay the whole way to the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about Dario Argento. Finally, after fucking eight seasons. We have we were previously, I think a few years ago, or a few seasons ago, going to talk about um, Deep Red, which is like one of his best films. Uh, and mm-hmm. I don't know why we didn't. We just we just decided not to. So, uh, But we decided to talk about opera this week because on February the 2nd, mm-hmm. on Shudder, there is a brand new um, documentary called Dario Argento Anico, which looks amazing. It's a retrospective documentary, uh, talking heads from a lot of his uh, friends and family and peers and filmmakers and all that sort of great stuff. So, uh, if you can check that out in Shutter, please do because it looks amazing. Um, we haven't actually spoke about this, Danny. We haven't spoke about this. We haven't, we haven't actually. Spoke, we is, literally yeah. haven't even said one word about this film, no. other than let's watch it and let's talk let's about watch it. it. Yeah, that's it. Like, and we, these, we've not even just. These are the episodes not... that I love because I love going into these a bit sort of dark and not knowing what the fuck to expect from you. Um. I'll start by saying I love opera mm-hmm. because I just I just do. So um I am I'm trying to read you, Danny, to see if you liked it or not. Thumbs up or thumbs down. It's a thumbs up for me. Yay! Uh, this is this is my first uh, venture actually into Italian horror. Uh, I've not oh, wow, watched any it? Italian really? horror. Yeah, this might this is my first time venturing into uh, the Italian giallo. horror landscape, little giallo, um, which sounds like a lovely, tasty treat. A little giallo, oh, I like a lovely. little giallo. We yellow um, treat. Mm, oh, <laughs> yellow. Uh, well, giallo is Italian for yellow. Yellow. Oh, okay. That's where it came from. Um, yellow cinema. It uh, came. From, no, it came from the word giallo. Came from uh, the old, like, pulp mystery books. Um, oh. used to have yellow covers and they were they were that's what they called them giallo and that sort of stemmed from that because giallo mm. it has things that boxes that it needs to text to be a giallo film and we'll get into it in a bit like but um yeah so this is very much it ticks most of the boxes i think i did not know that i'm learning more and more about giallo yellow. every day giallo yellow they call giallo, giallo. They call me Jello, Yellow, Whip, Mellow, Jello. Have you not watched right. the, the Sopranos, Danny? I've watched The Sopranos, but uh, that's not Jello. I know, but. Hey, Maron, eh? Uh, yeah, I. Uh, but yes, I really, really enjoyed this. I did yeah, really good. enjoy it. Like, good. don't get me wrong, there's definitely some parts I was like, this is silly. Um, of course. I love it's stylistically silly Mm -hmm. and that's you know we'll talk we'll get into some of it um further into the video but yeah no i had i had a good time Mm -hmm. i had a good time and you know what it's one of those things i genuinely thought we were going to do another film with the same twist as last week's film or the week before's film oh oh, really i is how this tension are you be talking about? Same? Yeah, I'm talking about high tension for anyone that didn't watch our last video. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We talked about high tension and the twist in that was it was her all along. Mm-hmm. And I bah, bah. hated that. I fucking hated it. Whereas with this, had that been the case, because there was a point where I was kind of like, is it 
her um it would have been far better executed if that was the twist i would have been i would have been coming to this being like we had the same twist again Mm. but done right has Uh, high tension completely fucked up your whole way of watching movies i just i'm gonna be like the bad guy is the person (laughs) is the protagonist the protagonist is the antagonist no this this i think there was kind of enough there that had that happened i'd have been like that makes sense um whereas with the with high tension it didn't but we'll not talk about i i i know we're not talking about enough that about that in the last video uh we'll not get into that we're here to talk about opera and opera does not have that twist but nope. i'll give my reasons as to why i thought that twist Good. could have let's, happened as we get into it let's get into it i'm really looking forward to hearing your theories on uh, on why you may have thought that was the twist that there was no twist. There was no twist. Um, the plot kind of, of a bit of a twist. Uh, well, the, it was a wee bit of a well, surprise. Well mm-hmm. Um, so the plot follows a young female opera singer who becomes entwined in a series of murders that mm-hmm. take place in the opera house. Uh, that has that she's she is singing in an op- operatic version of Lady Macbeth, um, and she's the lead, and she's being stalked by a masked killer. So I mean that's amazing math. Yeah, I mean it's it's just like an opera house. Are you joking? It's, what a setting! It's a lovely setting. The you know the set pieces in this film are great. I think there's like some lovely, lovely set pieces. I love the whole scene in the like costume department. I Aww. was I was all for that. Like I was pure like give me more of that. And even the fucking the apartment building they're in and how that sort of laid out and just the look of it i was like i know do you know what i love about the the sets just to sort of go ahead a wee bit i love that when you go into her apartment it's obviously quite big like you go down you kind of don't get to see it fully mm-hmm. um you, you go into different rooms her bedroom's massive and then whenever she goes into the other room across the way remember the neighbor that she talks to it's completely fucking different. Yeah. And the walls are all different colours and it's like this is so cool. It's like just like different, you know, architecture Her personalities. And this, yeah, and the same everything. building. Mm-hmm. I love it, yeah. I mean I'm I'm obsessed with the the look of this film and it is classic giallo, like we talked about uh, you know, boxes that need to be ticked. Mm-hmm. Um and I think one of the main ones is that it's murder mystery type theme to it usually sort of leans into like a noir style mm-hmm. uh, murder mystery theme and it's usually a whodunit the masked killer um, they're not always masked but they, they're they always in the shadows mm-hmm. and they, they tend to there's a lot of close ups of their like gloved hands Yeah, and... I love that he had double gloves yes. just oh yes gloves. He was double. He had the black gloves, know? which is a, a is a classic for Giallo. Extra protection. He had like the plastic gloves to get yeah. on, so the blood wouldn't be on it, and yeah. also elaborate weapons. So it's not just a normal fucking dagger or knife. It's like a really over the top, elaborate, sort of weird dagger that he uses, um, which I love as well. And ah, oh, just just the music, uh, the style of film and the shots, the over the top kind of the dubbing. We haven't even talked about the fucking dubbing yet. Yeah, the, the over the top dubbing is amazing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we to get back on high tension, we briefly spoke about whenever it was first released in the US by Lionsgate. Um, it got some negative reviews because the dubbing of that was very bad, and I don't know why they chose to dub it in the year two thousand and three, but they did, and they got some negative reviews for it. But if you go back to seventies and eighties Giallo that is dubbed, it's just brilliant, man. There's such a charm to it, and um, I don't know if it would have the same effect. Actually, strangely, if it wasn't dubbed, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think would would they get away with it as much? To, I think you can get away with it and say that it's like an homage to that. Mm. But I feel like people nowadays would just be like, "Oh, that's dubbed shape," because yeah. we're so used to like things being dubbed well now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know, this this is of its time. Yes, you no. Know? But again, it is as pure pumped up to the max and all the mm. different like i love all the different sort of british voices that were in this as well you know yeah. like the police very much have like 
a policey British yeah. voice used and for the, and stuff. You know, the, the the neighbor, the sort of annoying neighbor that she talks to, is like pure. She's just stepped out from fucking the city standards, like yeah, she's just like. <laughs> What are you doing bringing her in here? Oh, you pat. <laughs> Give me a fat. You're minging. I know. <laughs> and then the fucking, the, uh, the, like, the, the manager, uh, the, the, like, stage manager as well with the big, like, camp voice and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it just, like, it's pure, it is panto, like. I think uh, what's, I think I see what's really interesting about the fact that it's dubbed and a lot of Jello films are dubbed is that a lot of the cast, some of the cast are English, you know, they're they're English speaking. They're not all Italian or Spanish or, you know, um French or whatever. Uh but they uh, they just they choose to release the films uh with this I suppose it's ADR, um, or mm-hmm. a dub version of it. Um I don't even know if it's the English actors that the English speaking actors that appear in the film, I don't know if it's them actually speaking i don't know if it's their voice that yeah, has been ADR'd. dumped back over yeah, um yeah but i think the, that's really interesting the even i think what it really adds to is whenever somebody's like screaming because the screams seem like otherworldly because yeah. they don't really match the way their mouth is mm-hmm. uh there's the there's a kill in the apartment we'll we'll talk about it later because one of my favorites but there's oh, a there's a kill there's a death that happens in the apartments and the character is like doing this pure horrific like hollering scream but that's not what her face is doing yeah <laughs> it's kind of just like this this feels fucking mental right now because mm-hmm. that scream shouldn't be going with how she looks right now yeah um and it, I, I think that adds to it i think that makes it kind of a bit more like fuck like what's going on yeah you know? and there's a weird thing as well where it is uncanny in that sense when you're watching it and it feels forbidden as well because it feels like you shouldn't be watching it it's european cinema you know mm-hmm. even though we're all grown men like yeah you shouldn't be watching it it reminds it sort of reminds me of like being a kid and like you know flicking through sky and getting to the german channels you know you know a wee bit of dirty you know and uh, it was all dubbed, and you were sort of like you knew that was forbidden because it was like European. That's just forbidden. Yeah, that's just forbidden. That's just forbidden. But yeah, so it's got a strange nostalgia feel to it there, and uh, I love it. I just love it, man. But I'm really glad that you you liked it, and I really hope that you kind of go to some other. Gel- Not all gel is great, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like you can go back to like Argento is probably one of the most famous, but um, Mario Bava as well. Blood and Black Lace is amazing. And yeah. I think it's classic yellow, you know, like mannequins and the shadows and mm. the saturate the color saturation and stuff. Um mm. it's so good. Um but we'll get into this now. Um it stars uh the lead star is a Spanish actor called Christina Marcelash. I'm probably completely butchering that name. Uh, Dan- Before you said you weren't even going to attempt any of the Italian names. Yeah. He's I'm not, not Italian, either. she's Spanish, so we'll just call her Christina. Hmm. Um, Urbano Barbarina. Uh, Ian Charleston, who I think is... I want to say I think he's the the director in the film. Hmm. Who's directing. Um, the fellow with the pure platinum blonde hair. The yeah. blonde hair, yeah. Hmm. Um, and then Daria Nicolodi, who is... Uh, she, Sadly, she, she passed away in 2020. She was actually um, with Dario Argento for many years. They were partners and they had a child, Asia Argento. She's the mother of Asia. So she's the older girl that Christina goes to for help. So she's appeared in quite a lot of Argento films over the years. Um, Originally, uh, Argento, I think, wanted Jennifer Connelly to play the role of the lead, the lead character. What's the girl called? This? What's her name? Fucking hell, that's terrible that we don't. Oh I didn't write that down. Um, I told you I'm not pronouncing <laughs> any Italian names. <laughs> I know, but her name's probably Susan or something. Hang on, something not Italian at all. Uh, her name is da, 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 da. Betty. Betty, there you go. Yeah. Oh, Betty. 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 Uh, so she. I think he wanted Jennifer Connelly to play her because uh, Jennifer Connelly had pl- had starred in Phenomena, which is another strange. It's not really Phenomena. a giallo. It's not really a giallo. It's more of a supernatural horror. 
Mm. Uh, but definitely check that out if you can, man. It's a weird oh, well, movie. Yeah. I fucking love that too. Um, and also Mia Sara, who would played the princess in Legend, which oh, how much do we love Legend? Oh, I do love it. And Legend. Ferris Bueller's Day Off as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but didn't come, didn't happen. So this this actress ended up playing her. I think she's fantastic, and I know I it's it's, great, yeah. it's hard to kind of judge because of the dubbing and stuff, but. Um, I mean, she's stunning looking, and she's she really does a good job of like portraying the fear. Yeah, the the bits like whenever she is like tied up with a fucking don't even get me fucking started on. How I nearly texted you because I was like, Bleh. I know I forgot to say to you before ah. that there's a lot of eyeball action. <laughs> <laughs> that's what well, again anyone who has not watched any of our previous videos before there's some i have a thing about like shit being near or in or touching or in happen to eyeballs and we'll talk about what happens in this with eyeballs but it just i was sitting there like ah, nah. class mm-hmm. so good man it's so good yeah. it's a great um, it's a great torture method but it just it really turned me i was like Bleh. get away from them eyeballs mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I th- she's fantastic, and um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so she plays the the singer who gets this part after she's an understudy, basically, and the the lead actress has an accident on uh on the opening night, and mm-hmm. she has to step into her position to fill the part of Lady Macbeth. But um, the budget for the film it was difficult actually finding the budget. It was made for seven billion lira, which mm-hmm. works out That's approximately sad. as eight million dollars. Approximately, yeah. I tried to figure it out, and I was trying to find a correct figure, and it, I couldn't just go to my usual place and find it. It was I had to go a few different places to find it, but it did really badly. It only made four million lira, yeah. Um, but it was a film that it it, it was supposed to be released in the U.S. I think uh, Orion Pictures were going to release it in the U.S., and for some reason they never, never they never released it. No, they never released it. Um. It was only released in Italy in cinemas, yeah. um. So that's that was only the Italian but or the, the Italian box office, which yeah. I say when you think of it isn't that bad really when you think of it like that. But it was released on VHS everywhere else, and there's a couple of different cuts. So, uh, originally it was supposed to be released by Orion Pictures in the US, and then was recut. There was some scenes that were edited, so the, I think forty seven seconds was cut, which doesn't seem like a lot. But yeah. when you consider that that could, you know, on on, on the screen it can completely change yeah, the scene. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and this you know it was the scene actually where the girl in the haberdashery gets the scissors in the mouth. Uh, yeah. There was more of that. I think there was more of that. It was more of a stabbing action, so that was kind of cut, um, a little bit as well. But the original, I think the original for or sorry, the cut version never got released in the US, but it. Mm-hmm. It was available on a Japanese laser disc. Right. So yeah, it's weird. Like yeah. and then there is a few other versions of the film, like sort of famously Giallo films do have lots of different cuts that are released on different discs and the I think you can get I think you might be able to get it on the RO the UK RO DVD release, which was from years ago, mm-hmm. as a as a bonus disc. Um but like why would you want to watch the cut version? Just watch the the uncut, the original version, yeah, which I think is widely available now as the version that you usually see whenever you go to. Where did you watch this, by the way? Shutter. I Shutter. That's why I seen it. Um, I think that's <laughs> you want the to uncut. sponsor Shutter, by the way. Shutter, Shutter? please. That's Just, twice uh, we shut it you out now. Yeah, please do give us some money. Uh, <laughs> but, or just uh, free shit. I know a t-shirt, man. A wee fucking yeah. A little shutter t shirt right here. Something, you like how I'm wearing I'm wearing a little Boba Fett made out of music notes. I know Star what Wars am I culture? doing? Because it was like stab. Music. Stab. We stab. Just because mm-hmm. Giallo thought, oh, a well, sort of connection, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, um, the Habadashi scene's great. I love that scene. Um, so, uh, interestingly enough, Danny, mm. do you know the origins of opera? Do you mean opera? The film, an no, art form, the, or the, the film? film? The film. Uh, well, it's it's it was his original idea, and then he co-wrote the script. From what I could gather from the opening titles, which, by the way, I fucking love the opening titles to this yeah. film. I fucking I, the, the the her trying to rehearse with the, yeah. the the ravens just blinking all the close-ups of the ravens' that eyes scene. with a reflection of yes, the orchestra yes, yes, and yes. stuff. Oh, yeah. That opening oh. scene's 
gorgeous man stunning like i just love that set like i love the opera house like you yeah. just can't get in better than an opera house like it's such so a good. cool cool set um and that opening scene with the raven and then sort of pv where you don't actually see the actress the, the cameras you know maybe so interesting. i was going to talk because that's i think like that that whole opening is a massive i thought it was a massive red herring because yeah it's all from her pov and then when the killer comes in it's all from their pov mm-hmm. so i was kind of like this is trying to lead us into thinking that the actress who's got in a car accident at the start of the film is the killer and there is that kind of notion because the the raven owner blames her early on uh when the police kind of come in first investigate and yeah but i was kind of i didn't think it was her uh, straight away i was like yeah she's fucking hit by a car somewhere mm. she did send her stinky piss perfume hi i i didn't i was like that's a fucking red herring that's not going to happen um we will get into my theories in a bit but yeah like I really, yeah, I really enjoyed the opening of this film, and I love that it didn't show us her at all. We just heard a voice and had her point of view, and then had like we articles, and then we notes written by her and stuff, and that was it. You know. Well, there was a reason why they didn't show her. <gasps> oh. They were supposed to cast a famous actress, and I didn't write the name down. I want to say Is it Italian. No, uh, I want to <gasps> say it was one of the Redgraves, so maybe Vanessa Redgrave. Okay. Um, that's probably wrong, but I think I, for some reason I think it's Vanessa Redgrave, and for some reason that didn't happen, mm-hmm. so they had to cast somebody. Well, they didn't really cast anybody. There's nobody there. It's the camera, yeah. but they essentially just cut a lot of that character's part. So you mm-hmm. see her legs, mm-hmm. like a couple of scenes later when she's watching, she's watching the 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 opera on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's all angry and she throws like a ball at the TV. So you see her legs cast up, but you don't really see her. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe you see her later on in the film. But she was supposed to have a bigger part. Yeah. So um, that's why they basically did that POV at the start where you don't see her. It's it's just from her POV. But I do also feel like they also use that in a way to create a red herring, as you said. Yeah. Because the POV of the killer, which is, you know, famous famous what happens in like Giallo and Slash Slasher movies in general, US mm-hmm. slasher movies, which obviously stole a lot of stuff from Giallo. Uh, you, you see the POV of the killer and it's still sort of create that red herring as well. But no, I love that opening scene. But what I was gonna say was the idea from this. Um it was Dario Ugento who came up with the idea and yes, it was co cool, written by Franco Farini, who also co cool wrote uh, phenomena, which I've mentioned earlier, and phenomena. De- demons. <laughs> I'm not going to stop doing. <laughs> um, and and demons, and I think he co-wrote a few other Argento movies as well. Mm-hmm. But um, Argento was hired to direct a version of Verdi's uh, Rigoletto. Uh, but he had he had complete he had mad ideas. Um, he wanted to like rig the seats. So that whenever there was lightning in the theater, the seats would like at light you. So basically, Argento was way ahead of the game, um, and I'm not sure when all that 4DX stuff came in, but he was ahead of the game, and he basically he, he had the f- he had the 4DX idea way back in the fucking you know 1985 or whatever 84 maybe it was. Mm-hmm. So he started writing the screenplay in 1985, or he came up with the idea. Um, and then he basically used that idea. So he obviously didn't make that. He was he was told no, he can't do that, and he was cast aside. And mm-hmm. that was kind of the basis of the film opera, because in the film, the director of the opera is a horror is a horror director who yeah. nobody has any faith in, and they don't think he can do a good job. Mm-hmm. So I love it. I love that. I just just love that he used that, and he just went, "Oh fuck it, I'm going to write this screenplay about." You know, and obviously he threw in a couple of you know stabby motions and a we mm-hmm. did, we did he just we did he twenty four minutes, Danny. Mm-hmm. I wrote 24. it down. Twenty four minutes. minutes. You see your first dead. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> there you go. We're like specifically like we are twenty four minutes. No, in, I was taking a few notes. <laughs> and um, <laughs> another thing that makes a giallo a giallo is often a lot of 
you know, the theming of Giallo is obviously about murder and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's obviously some sexual overtones in Giallo's a lot. There's always like a sexy well, again, woman. That's like a, a noir thing too, isn't it? Yeah. Except, it's... I imagine it's Giallo a bit more kind of like, here's a nip, whereas noir was kind of like, we will allude to the nip. Yeah, well... And see it. For our American sensibilities cannot handle the titty. Noir film, you know, famously noirs are if you if you have a woman and a cigarette. Mm, that's, you know, that's it. That's all you need. If you, you, you can make a noir movie and, you know, if you've got a gun, obviously that makes it better as well. Mm. But, yeah, Giallo is a bit like if you've got a naked woman and a wee mm. fucking elaborate dagger mm -hmm. and over the top blood, then you've got a Giallo. Yeah. So, yeah, so 24 minutes. I did write it down. <laughs> it's not as much dead as, as I thought, though. No, I it's a wee not. bit more deadly later. Not, I thought I kind of imagined, uh, you know, the the Italians are very passionate people, yeah, they and are. I did I did uh, assume that there would be more deadly. So I could say in this one before we were like not deadly in sight, but there was deadies in this, but not as many deadies as I assumed. So there was yeah. deadies in sight, but not not loads of deadies. It wasn't deadyless. It wasn't deadyless. Was, uh, but uh, <laughs> underwhelmingly did he feel it was we'll have to come up with another word <laughs> i to feel figure like we're gonna have t-shirts that just say not a daddy in sight <laughs> not a daddy in sight or the faintest hint of the, what was it, the, the, faintest, faintest, the faintest hint of nip <laughs> the faintest hint of nip um yeah yeah that's a that's, bestseller there we're, gonna, sure. we're gonna get t-shirts that are just like a kind of like just a very uh what do you call it like a white but Satin. Yeah, maybe like a wee satin so that you will. Or why don't we get, why don't we make t shirts and cut holes? Like, <laughs> oh no, well, we can't judge because people are different sizes, aren't they? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd uh, have to have varying sizes. So it'll be like, you can get your t shirt in small, medium, large, uh, and then your nip size in small, yeah. medium, large, whatever. Yeah, yeah I don't know. But we could encourage nips? people to, we could encourage people to, to, <laughs> cut, to cut them out and. <laughs> You sure just have nuts. like like circles, yeah. little cotton circles on the yep. t-shirt. Absolutely, yeah. we should do that. Uh, we should do that. Let us know in the comments below if that's the kind of product. <laughs> Would you, you buy it to out there? Would Twenty you quid. Buy, uh, cutaway nipple t-shirts. Um, why not, man? Sure, fucking hell. <laughs> Let let's go back free to the nip. So, yeah. yeah, we got we got daddies. Free the nip. Free the nip. Right. Um, so yes. Yeah, so he wrote uh -huh. the screenplay based on the fact that something that actually happened in his real life. Um. And I think along with the likes of Deep Red and Tenebrae, which is another classic original film, I think Aubrey is kind of up there, is widely regarded as one of his best films. I think, personally, it's it's definitely up there uh, as one of his best GL films. Uh, Suspiria is probably his most famous film. Mm -hmm. However, it's kind of more supernatural. Um, it's set in a ballet uh, school, which is amazing. You know, a great setting as well, but... Uh, you know, it's it's shadowy and it's got loads of cool colours in it and stuff. And, yeah. You know, obviously there's murders, but it's not classic giallo. It's more supernatural. Yeah. Um, freaky witches. Amazing, amazing film as well. Oh, you haven't you haven't seen the original one, have you? You've seen the remake. You told me you saw the I've remake. Seen the remake? Yeah, I've definitely watched the remake, but I haven't seen the original. Ah, oh, the remake's yeah. amazing too. Yeah, the remake was fucking yeah powerful. Spooky like, man, very uh -huh, very spooky. Uh -huh. Maybe have to talk about that sometime. Oh, brilliant. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. I love the film. I love that it's got a real, obviously, it's Italian, so it has a real European feel to the way it looks. Yep. Um, I think the just the the entire look of the film is one of my favorite things about it. Mm -hmm. Um, it was it was shot by legendary British cinematographer called Ronnie Taylor, who um, has, man, he's worked on so many famous films. Like, he was a camera operator. Um, I say I think he originally started in the forties as a like a, a focus puller, you know. Right. So he would yeah. just stand and he would, you know, mm -hmm. they would tell him. I think back in those days you literally had to do it, and then yeah. obviously it became more of a sort of rig thing or whatever. So he was a focus puller and he he worked um, as camera operator on loads of famous films for, throughout the sixties, like The Innocents from nineteen sixty one. Um, he worked on The Devils as well, mm -hmm. which is. Oliver Reed film, Maybe very that, yeah. very controversial Oliver Reed film from 1971. Theatre of Blood, uh, Vincent Price, Barry Lyndon, Stan Stanley Kubrick's film. Um, but he also worked on a little space opera called Star Wars. I don't know Star Wars. A I little know. Star Wars film. He was a camera operator. Oh. I don't I don't know 
what he did, other than that he was a camera operator, so there you go. Um, uh, but his first job as an actual DOP was on the island of Dr. Moreau, mm. um, not the Marlon Brando version. I was going to say the Brando no. one? No. <laughs> no, the 70, the, the 70, the 70s version. Um, back to the House of Pain. Uh, so he worked as the DOP on the second unit, and then he became a cinematographer in his own right. And he also worked in like of Gandhi, you know, it's, uh, Ooh, which which was Richard Attenborough. Yeah, it was like a it won a what an Oscar, didn't it? I think so. Yeah, it was definitely it was up bit, for Oscars. Yeah, it was a big it was a big award. Yeah, one. yeah. Um, uh, and then Sea of Love and like other horror movies like Popcorn and stuff and loads of movies. Man, I was looking at his fucking IMDb, like Jesus Christ, this guy's worked on some good shit. Uh, so and you know you can see it in this film, you know. The camera shots are amazing, and the way the camera moves, yeah, it's just so good, man. It's, There's some it. great, absolutely fantastic shots. I know you said this film has a European feel to it, but I also think like it's one of those ones like yes, it's it's Italian, and yes, it has that kind of European sort of feel to it. But it also, like for me, I was kind of like this could happen anywhere. You know, there's a lot of the the architecture that almost kind of reminded me a bit of New York as well. Mm-hmm. So, I, which again, I know it's got all those kind of European influences throughout it, but like, yeah, it, it didn't feel, it felt kind of timeless. Like obviously there was like the old stereos and stuff, the technology is of its mm-hmm. time, but mm-hmm. the actual narrative itself and how the characters did stuff, I was kind of like, no, this, this feels kind of like, uh, you know, it, it had a timeless feel to it. And I feel like it's something if, if you were to do, a shot for shot remake of it now, but with like modern technology and stuff, it would still be a great film. Because it was made in nineteen eighty seven. You kind of are taken into that location as well. Mm-hmm. Um there's not that many locations in it other than the upper house, the apartment building. You know, there's a bit where they're out in the street. Uh yeah. you go to a couple of houses but it's your your man's fancy house with a yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. Fucking castle looking. Um looking but house. it's all you know, it is quite contained. Mm-hmm. Um and you do feel like you're there with the characters, uh, which is sometimes hard to do. But it's it it reminded me of like obviously like Giallo movies in general are hugely influential, but this movie in particular, I feel like has been stole. You know, a lot of stuff has been stolen from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and a lot of like U.S. slashers have stolen from it. Um, I'm just trying to think of stuff like Valentine and, mm-hmm. um. Scream Two as well. Yeah. Um. There was a few things in it. It's kind of. I mean, obviously the the operatic part of Scream Two. This the segment where she's on stage and it's very operatic. That's kind of. I feel like it has been influenced by this film as well. But such a such a great film, and we may as well go straight into the kills because, like, mm. another massive thing about Giallo films is the kills, and they're usually quite inventive. It does usually involve some sort of stabby thing um mm-hmm. in this case there is a dagger and there is you know the needles for the eyes which the make you look and the, yeah the and the switchblade as well we do get switch a switch blade blade. and the big haberdashery uh, scissors that are about eight foot long yeah yeah and yeah oh man the well, i mean well the first kill uh, the first kill is with a fucking coat hook uh your man the, mm. the like person the the opera house worker uh, catching That's right. oh, shit. The, yeah. the killer up with the binoculars. You uh, shouldn't be here. You what are you be? doing here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've got to get away. <laughs> you've got to get down from here. This is only for staff or whatever you fucking said. And then, yeah, the killer just bashes. It's not even like the back of his head. It's like the nape of his neck. Just Aye, the soft part. Mushing it. You know, yeah, right there. End of the fucking coat hook. Uh, which you get that, like, a coat hook's not even sharp. Like the amount of fucking bashing you'd have to do yeah. to actually get that to go in. And then do you think because it doesn't really like it doesn't really show you what happens when the killer like the killer does obviously like make off and run away. Um but you don't see the bot like is the body just hanging there like a wee coat after? Like is that how I they so. it kind of cuts away and it's everyone's freaking out because the lights have fallen, but they're like, Oh, uh-huh. it's an accident, it's fine, just crack on um but yeah is that we like opera house worker just like uh, yeah know? they don't actually show it you're right yeah obviously mm-hmm. budget reasons you know and mm-hmm. stuff like that but um they just kind of 
they just mention it later, you know, when they're talking about somebody's been killed or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, man. It's like, I think if somebody died, if somebody was murdered, like they yeah. might be like, here, do you know and what? Maybe we should well, stop this opera. Let's and stop the production and enclose the entire thing. And it's like, no, no, we're still going to keep it showing ease, it. You know, it's, the, it's the opening night. You know, we've, we've yeah. got a couple more nights to do here. Let's keep going. And that's it. Like, no one seems that overly bothered by it. They're more interested in the reviews for the show. Hmm. <laughs> it's kind of, which was just like that's wild, um, but yeah, crazy but man. The, yeah, the next kill then is the first one where he like the killer, uh, ties Betty up after she's just made love. She's made sweet sweet mm -hmm. love to the to like the theater. What is well, he? He's like he's not a guns. theater owner, but he he like basically he's like a financier for the opera. I uh, he's in. He's like part of the. He's like a yeah. partner type thing. His whole thing. See, whenever he walks in, because she just had her first show, you know, she's called in to replace the the actress that we talked about, who was or the opera singer who was hit by the car at the start. Uh, so she's been called in. She's like, oh, I, you know, am I not too young to play this part? And they're like, no, you'll be great. And she's like, oh, but the play is cursed. You know, the opera's cursed. And mm. they're like, yeah, you'll be fine. It's all right. You know, which again, I love. I love that they use Macbeth for this yeah, as well yeah. because of all the kind of connotations around it being the, the cursed play and stuff uh, just and I love that they try to modernize it by having like guns and you know it's war time you know uh, like it looks to be set sort of during a war like World War 2 or whatever uh, and there's like the crash plane set and stuff mm, and I love again probably, the, set, yeah. the set within the set all the smoke just incredible. rising up slowly yeah too much smoke turn smoke down mm. uh, love that and, Do you know uh, what I loved as well? Just sorry to cut you off. You can uh, get back into it. I love that they show cameras and you can see the, the, them working off stage. Mm -hmm. and yep. Even that scene where she sort of goes off stage, sort of like kind of behind the scenes. Um, She goes off stage and, you know, I just love shit like that. I love seeing behind the scenes shit. Um, yeah, there's a really, there's a really interesting bit where just on that, like, because again, Stuff where stuff that I love films where films are being made, but even with mm. this year, it's not a film they're making, but you still get to see that kind of behind the scenes of what's going on with stage shows and like yeah, I, production I've, and stuff. Yeah, like I, I've done that. I've worked on stage shows before and getting to see behind that. And a pure gave me like, like we like nuggets mm. of oh, I love I love that. I love being part of that world, and you get to see a lot of that. There's a fantastic bit where she's been like counted in to go back on stage, and you can see just above the stage for the actors is like a big digital clock with the time on it. Mm -hmm. And see even stuff like that there, all those wee details and stuff. It's like oh, this is this is behind the stage. This is for real, you know. Uh, lovely, lovely fucking set pieces all over this film. Um, but what was the saying? I see. So she's she's fretting a bit about it being her first night and all, but you know she comes out and she she blows it away despite the fact there's been a fucking murder and lights mm. have nearly fell on people and burst into flames. The opera just cracks on, so she just cracks on, and then people are coming in and congratulating her, and she gets the pissy perfume from the the woman she's replaced, and then this financier fella comes in and he's like, "Oh, I seem to be the last person to come in and pay you a compliment." Do you think I could get a kiss? I was like, fuck off, you, you troll up. But then she's kind of like, okay. You yeah, mean creepy <laughs> fucker. Like... And, then, and then they go home together and he's like, so you uh, tenors are kind of sluts, aren't you? And she's just like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, we're not. Like, what makes you say that? Hello. Uh, which again, I was kind of like, okay. But which again, it plays into the whole, obviously, like the stereotypes of opera performers. Um, it shows, I think, an understanding of the world whilst also trying to be like, but it's not like that. Because yeah. It's okay. Uh, but then I think it also plays into the fact that people in power like to, you know, or wankers or dicks. You know, it's the yeah. whole fucking Harvey Weinstein. You know, mm. they try to try to just buck around them, like. Yeah, but she seemed kind of. She was kind of like, all right, but uh, yeah. So he ends up. So they go back to his place, his like manor house, owned by his uncle, and he's poor. Like, oh, just want to support the arts with all my money. And uh, <laughs> looks like on. a fucking museum, man. It does, yeah. All the art that big massive room and... that you go in, with mm -hmm. the bed and all. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he he takes himself off then for a wee wash, and uh, she gets like tied up because again, the, the the thing is, the killer, the killer just kind of like fucking appears. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. just he's just like I'm here, and he ties <laughs> her up, and he fucking tapes like the needles under her okay. eyes and that like and her eyelids like slightly coming down on them getting pricked and the blood uh, it's not even that it goes in her eyes it's, it's just that it's like her just eyelids touching the top touching, of her eyelids yeah. and it i love that it's just like little subtle 
blood drips. You know, it's not over the top. It's kind of almost like, like tears. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then he comes back in the room, or yeah, he manages to like knock the door in because the killer's locked it. And then he gets the fucking the blade mm. up into like the soft palate, and he can see the blade coming yeah. through, all covered in blood in his mouth. That close up, that was I was like, that's that's fucking lovely shot, but it's rotten. Like so just good, man. Hit, fucking his tongue working around the blade and stuff. Uh, yeah, again, the yeah, the close ups to the. The, the close-ups of the violence in this film are insanely good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that scene, man. Like you say, I, I did notice that the killer does seem to sort of magically appear as if from yeah. nowhere. And also, what about the fucking rock music that kicks in oh, every time man. he's like going in for a... It, it kicks in every time he's like going for a kill. Like whenever mm. he's doing his thing, this fucking rock music kicks in and it's just like what? What? Yeah. And it's like the thing I fucking loved because it kind of took me out of a bit was after after your man, the financier fella, gets killed and she manages he, the killer like cuts her loose a bit and she manages to shimmy herself free and then just like runs out of the house with like a big overcoat on herself. Mm. But the music goes from being this like rock music into this really like sweet like lullaby. Very music, delicate, yeah. As she goes out into the the rainy street, and it's like, what what's with this tone? Like, it's such a jarring tone mm. change because, like, she she's obviously distraught and freaked out by this whole thing. But then that happened again. That's when I first started thinking. I was like, there's something not right here. Like, she's she's not as panicked as I think somebody in that situation would. Do be. you know what? Do you know what annoyed me about that scene was? Mm. She didn't take off the needles first. No, no. She starts doing other things and then she takes the yeah, and, then and I'm like, like, love, take the fuck. That's the most important thing. If you blink, you're screwed. Take yeah. them off first and then fucking sort yourself out. Yeah, yeah. But I love uh, that scene afterwards where she runs out into the rain. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sort of reminds me a wee bit of Sus- Suspiria, uh, which has a lot of reds and pinks and mm. purples. But in this one, it had... What did it have, Danny? Oh, please. <laughs> And also, there was it is... like a neon sign that was really blue in the background, yeah, and it was yeah. it, it was really a small thing, but it just oh, it was lovely in the rain. It, oh, it it lights are lovely in the rain, and yeah, there's some lovely, lovely like rainy shots in this film. Mm. There's also there's the bit um in the apartment with the the red and green light. Green, yes, yes. Lincoln, which again, that did you get? Did you get Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, from? absolutely, I got Elm Street. Yeah, nah, did Elm you Street get four Nightmare Street over specifically. That? I was like, Ooh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. Lovely use of light all over this film. And then, um, so well, I don't want to jump ahead. I want to talk about that scene later, very yeah. soon actually, because that's one of the most iconic deaths ever. Yeah. But the we sort of jump to the haberdashery scene where. Mm-hmm. The costume department where it's oh, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely love big that. room. All all the mannequins, mannequins in behind windows. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's just a great set piece. And again, sort of reminded me a little bit of Scream Two. I think I think there's a scene in Scream Two where they they do kind of stuff like that. But um, but I love the scene. Uh, she's repairing because it, it goes on for ages, mm-hmm. as well. Like way yeah. longer than you think, and the, yeah. the her oh. mates repairing the costume and. But but why why is the mate repairing the costume? Ooh. Why why is the mate repairing the costume? Because the killer just randomly decides to take his frustration out on her costume on he the Lady act. Macbeth costume, and then the wee crews, the wee ravens, free themselves. Mm-hmm. They free themselves and get out, and then start to fuck around with him. So he kills three of them. The bastard. I, I fucking he, he gives it like he gives the crews a proper wee whack too, which I, I was know. like. Leave Leave them wee birdies alone. What are they doing? Uh, yeah. But I fucking I love how that ties into later in the film. Like when that when the whole like the crows, the yeah. ravens, they don't forget. They don't forget. I, don't, I fucking they're like elephants. Fucking oh, I fucking love that. We like, furry black elephants. They don't forget. Fur? Uh, feathery. Feathery. Well, feathery. Fur, feathers. You know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, so she's replacing the stones and stuff. She's like, mm. wait a minute, I didn't put gold in this dress. Hmm, as pure overacting, like, but it's yeah. real hammy and camp, and I, I love it, man. And oh, then... her whole her whole thing is pure. When, uh, whenever she kind of, so she kind of, she has a proper tussle with the killer, like she proper like jukes it out, uh, with them. Uh, um, 
And then, oh, why is she fucking near Texan? Are you like, oh, I fucking man, see when she gets the fucking iron thrown at her back. She's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like, you oh, ow. she's back. like, as if she's dying. Yeah, you just got a fucking iron thrown at you. What the fuck? Um, but then she manages to uh, pure cope, cope them. And then she has a wee sneaky look. She has to go and have a wee sneak. But that's, Aye. again, that was another thing that, like, led me into my theory about Betty being the you killer. Keep, you keep going back to this theory. I really, like, I was so convinced of it because Betty's always, like, yes, Betty is there and watching, but she's almost isolated from the situation because she's, like, tied up and she's being forced to watch it. And mm, I thought this was playing. Because yeah, yeah. she always, she talks about how... She's having the, you know, she's she's like, they're always so similar to dream nightmares I had as a child. And we get to see that. We get to see these nightmares of, you know, a woman her being mother. attacked and her mother's tied to like a pillar. Yeah. And then we kind of see later on, she's actually a child observing this. It's not just a dream. It's, it's like a memory. But it was kind of like, are you, you know, is this some like trauma based, you know, you, you this is a res- as a result of the trauma you're now the killer but like that child inside of you is being forced to watch mm. what you're doing that's kind of why i was thinking for a bit because i was like you never actually see it. and then whenever the costume designer like lifts the mask up she's like oh, it's you it's uh, you and then and then she gets a fucking she gets fucking yeah, yeah. that would have been terrible because the killer is clearly a- a man like he's quite a strong bulky well you know what person. if if fucking switchblade <laughs> romance could get away with it well, why not that's true <laughs> um so that that's an amazing scene where the, you, i thought the the wee mate looked a wee bit like bruna gallagher kind of yeah from the commitments yeah, yeah. Actually, just reminded yeah, me of bruna but... gallagher mm-hmm. uh so she gets fucking she gets the big fucking scissors through your inner mouth uh-huh. and then yeah I see her written around in her mouth and like trying to. She must have like a gold tooth or something. It's the no. Like, it's the does, does he not oh, cut she, out? He no, cuts he, out the. He tries to get something out of her mouth, but then, yes, then he cuts into her uh, to get it out. Because yeah, pure like because there's all those like close up shots of like mm. clothes being cut and stuff. Like there's quite a few shots of that. Mm. Um, which again, like there's something about that kind of like that smooth slicing motion. Very and then the like, real sort of and... the blades come together. It's a real sharp blade, like yeah. Um, but it's great. So he gets that, and then uh, that was a great scene, man. What a mm-hmm. great scene! And then sort mm-hmm. of next big scene, I would say, would be the scene that we were talking about briefly with the red and green lights mm-hmm. with her friend who is played by um, Argento's ex, mm-hmm. where they have phoned the cops. They're in first of all, no. So it's a, quite a bit after that actually. They're in her apartment building. She's kind of... She's being protected by the She's kids. basically scared for her life because she knows something's going to happen here. Yeah. Um, And she phones her mate who comes over. And they're expecting this cop to come. And the cop comes to the door, but they don't know. Because they're very paranoid now because they think, mm-hmm. oh, that's a man, but is he actually the cop? Or yep. is he the killer pretending to be the cop? So mm-hmm. they do the whole scene, which again, that's fantastic. And the cop... Writing. He was in the apartment. Yes. Just there, just a cigarette. Exactly. Yes. So, yes. So, he came in originally. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's sitting in the living room and she's been, like, in a room, like, listening to her opera music. And, and it's yeah. it's playing that whole idea on who is, who is the actual cop and who is potentially the killer, which is fantastic, which is used quite a lot later on in, in a lot of films later on. But her mate... <sighs> fuck me. And they sort of tease it because I knew it was coming... I haven't watched this film in years, but I knew there was definitely a, like a keyhole scene with some. I just knew it, and I was like, "This is it, isn't it?" And I, I know it is. And it, they teased the the girl, um, Betty, had looked through it a few times or mm-hmm. through the wee peephole. Ah, uh, she remember, remember the neighbor and stuff, and mm-hmm. they'd sort of teased that that was a thing. Who are uh, you? <laughs> Where are you from? Who's he? I know. <laughs> and then. Uh, her mate looks through the peephole and is asking questions of this man who's showing the gun and showing his badge and all. And then, Danny, one of the most amazing scenes ever, she goes right up to the peephole and through the peephole we see, and it's really well shot because it's like, mm-hmm. how did they do that? Through the peephole we see your man lift the gun and oh, then we get a close-up of the gun, of the bullet coming out of the, the gun going through the peephole 
and through her fucking head and just and then no it then it not only manages to leave the barrel of the gun barrel through the barrel of the peephole through her eye her skull her brain the back of her skull and head it then also obliterates the phone that they were going to call the police on uh, of course like that- you know, that's the most thing. powerful small caliber pistol you've ever seen. I know, <laughs> but that yes, that the way that whole thing was shot, scene. and even the way because it, it like we see obviously the shot is through the people of the the gun coming up the barrel of the gun coming up to the people, but then it's almost like a like a side section like a cut like a cutaway panel of the bullet barreling through. The, the peephole chamber to then come out and then it like shows the bullet going into her eye and then the ca- camera cuts behind her and it coming out of her skull and hitting the phone the phone shattering to pieces in front of Betty and it was fucking it's such a well put together fucking piece of cinema like I've never I've never seen a bullet kill like it and there's no fucking like yes it's kind of slow mode so you get that effect of it going through the the peephole and stuff but like it's such a it's such a fucking quick edit and it's just it's oh it it's, was one that it literally as it was happening i was like fuck yeah it's quite and it's actually quite it's quite a shocking scene like it's quite a surprising yeah. scene because the yes they sort of tease it matter, fucking... but they don't like they they do tease it but it's not as if they they be like oh she's definitely getting her head blown off you mm-hmm. know so, so it does kind of come out of nowhere um it's just it's so well done and it's, it's so i love it and the build really up to it with her you know uh how do we know you're the police officer oh i spoke to you downstairs yeah but the cops in here oh no he's the killer the killer's in the mm-hmm. apartment will show us your badge and he does a real close up like so she can't really say it's like you could have got that anywhere let me see your face and then that's when the fucking bar and it's just yeah the tension that builds up there and you can see betty's freaking out in the apartment and the cop's gone you just see the cigarette sitting it's just it's such a it's such a it's really good. the tension so well built up for it to then happen with that fucking literal explosion of her brains out the back of her I know, skull. I know. Oh, and the big the explosion of the phone as well. That like everything's just flying everywhere, like brain matter bits of phone. It's fucking oh, it was it's yeah, it really was one of those moments in cinema where I was just like, oh. <laughs> I know. yeah, so good, man, so good. Loved it. I love I love all the close ups as well, like. You know, that's kind of a thing in a lot of original movies. Is he likes to show close ups of things. I just, I just love that in general. That's one yeah. of my things. I don't know if it's like a fetish or something, or I don't know why, but I love to see close ups of like, you know, hands like doing things close up and uh, just you getting really close uh, up all the time. <laughs> like, here, here, boy, come on, day. Eh? But um, I just love it, man. I just, I, just, I love Mac. You know, I love the Mac rule. Mm-hmm. lenses and all that stuff but you briefly spoke about the the music there um the music's a massive part of this film and i think if you took the music out it would be less effective uh, yeah. but you know famously argento likes to work with goblin the band goblin mm-hmm. um so claudio simonetti who's in goblin did did a lot of the music in this a lot of the rock music as well but also um bill wyman from the rolling stones uh, re- recorded some music for it and Brian Eno as well right. from Roxy Music which is you know yeah, interesting man that's very yeah, interesting, interesting you know I mean there's it... obviously other artists that worked on it as well but yeah. those are the kind of three main ones it's, it's such an interesting mix of music because obviously you've got all the like opera tunes you know got lovely orchestra with the, the opera music over the top of it and you've got her listening to her opera tracks when she's in the apartment she always has opera music on mm. in the apartment then you have the rock music during like any of the kill scenes um but then you do have like i said when she kind of runs out of the the house after that first kill there's this it's almost like a lovely lulling sort of mm-hmm. uh piece of music over that and there's and it's such a it, eclectic mix of sound mm. throughout this film and it like on the one hand like I think I think you've got to be able to I think you have to have a skill to really put music like that together and for it to work yeah, because it, makes it could very easily have fallen to bits mm-hmm. Um, but he just seems to make like, like I said when the, the rock music kind of happened during the first kill I was like Whoa, where did that come from? But then obviously it becomes a motif within the film. So I was kind of like, okay, I get this now, but 
yeah, it, it just yeah, he just seems to have managed to create this like lovely soundscape that creates all the right ambience and stuff for what's going on. Yeah, um, yeah, it's great, man. I love it, mm-hmm. I love it. And then that sort of leads into kind of the finale, which we'll talk about. Um, it. I do want to say that throughout the movie, it is a who done. It's not really a who done it. There is a mass killer, and you don't see his face. Yeah, it's not a film that you are guessing who the killer is. But is what mm. I mean by that. Well, I, um, I, you do a wee bit, but not really it's revealed. I was kind of. I actually thought it was going to be whenever I got over my notion of her being the killer. I kind of uh, as I got towards the end, I was like, nah, don't don't think it's her yeah. anymore. Um, I thought it was the director. Well, I, I think sh- that's the point. Is that mm-hmm. there's not enough characters for you to choose. Really, yeah. there's only a couple of, of people that you could choose, and I think they did definitely try to lean it in towards you guessing that it would be the director, mm-hmm. uh, which it's not. It's the the police the cop, the, uh, police the one cop. who asked for autograph at the start. Yeah. Which again, like, bar that scene and them them talking kind of at our apartment and stuff, like he's not in it a while lot, mm. you know. Uh, but it's just interesting. Then whenever it is kind of revealed, I fucking. I love how they reveal the killer in this. I fucking love it. I love whenever she arrives at the theater and she's kind of freaking out about it and the director's like, don't worry about it. The fucking, the, the crew are working on something. He comes up with a good some idea. Some changes. If I love her that it's not even told true. He's like, don't uh-huh. worry about it. I'm making a few changes to the show. Just should go out and perform. It'll happen when it happens. And then she fucking goes out to perform and she's singing with Macbeth on the stairs and he fucking goes, go. And the fuck. <laughs> big cage fucking smashes through the set the fucking raven handler is inside it with all his wee ravens he fucking puts the cage up and all the ravens fucking are a bit kind of like ah, at mm. first and then this one raven fucking flies out circles the audience and then fucking dive bombs down into it and it's just like I love as well how he does circle around for quite a while it was mm-hmm. probably only like a minute or whatever but yeah, it felt but like a long time tension. yeah it mm-hmm. felt like a long time and they they also teased there was a character who was up in like a wee booth who they teased and who was he? I can't was remember. He... I can't remember his role in the film, but you saw him a couple of times, and they sort of teased that they might be going towards him, and mm-hmm. then it circled again. It came down, and I mean that scene where the raven goes down and attacks your man and pulls out his eye. Pulls his eye bullet. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's not even like that there, but like like I said, the fucking the birds being so close to people's faces was freaking me. Out. I was like, even the fucking when a pigeon flies too close to me, I'm like, <laughs> um. So that was I was like that. But the bit then after, so he's had his eye pecked out and his face cut up and shit, and he kind of scuttles off, and everybody's running out the the theater. Uh, and then the ravens are just kind of like hopping amongst all the like mm. random bits of jewelry that have been dropped. There's just like fucking pearl necklaces and rings and stuff on the mm. ground. Uh, but then there's the wee fucking eyeball. And did you think, do you think that was a real eye? I think it was a pig's eye. Takes it. Was the way it like was moving in the because yeah. the, the raven picks up and then it has it like in its beak. Sinew in the back and all, like, yeah. In a way it's like moving as the, obviously the wee raven's like tongue is like poking against it. So it's like, almost like wiggling in its mouth i was like i think like either that's a real like well-made gelatin eyeball or it's a fucking pig's eye because Mm. it's got that kind of like movement are you familiar with pig's eyes or (laughs) we had to dissect one in school i remember doing that in science we had to dissect because we they wanted us to cut open to get the lens out ah okay Mm-hmm. But we were learning about the biology of why the fuck would you size? mental. We dissected shit. We dissected a heart, and we dissected an eyeball. I never did any shit in school. Never man. did any dissections. No. Um. But yeah. So yeah, I was just looking at it. and Was like, I think that might be an actual eyeball, not an actual human. An eyeball, but an eyeball nonetheless. A bear's human. But so the the raven, yeah, that was cool. He still had the eyeball in his mouth, and the killer kind of tries to shoot, and then he fucks off, and the. Uh, Eventually, he gets Betty, and he he, he ties her to a, he brings her into this room, and he ties her to the chair, and he does the whole thing with her again. Um, and then the room is set on fire, mm-hmm. and yeah. a convenient room full of like old scripts and stuff. Yeah, he, uh, and yeah. also convenient it has gasoline in it. <laughs> yeah, so he so he burns. Oh uh, man, see that <laughs> the fucking scene, like so the. 
the fucking the police she manages i fucking i love when she kind of you know manages to escape and like he gets knocked out and he's set alight by the fire and the gasoline but then the the police manage to they manage to bust in and someone's got a fire extinguisher and they start like using mm. it on the flames but it starts like hitting the body mm-hmm. and the way it was moving i was like that's a fucking you can tell it's a fucking thick rubbery body but i didn't in my head wasn't thinking what was eventually it going is to actually come out in the film yeah. Yeah, yeah like i was kind of just like oh someone didn't have budget for like a decent weighty mannequin um so it was just kind of like flopping around as it was like being hit with the being hit with the extinguisher um but then but then in the news after mm-hmm. when everything seems to be like happy in the end it's like it turns out it was a stage mannequin <laughs> It was a mannequin all alone. Oh my god, it was. But also, why, why was that not discovered like straight away? Yeah, like, what, why was five that minutes of days, like later on the news? You know, they'd already like fucked off to Denmark or wherever the yeah. fuck they were, France and then the news is like, was it France? I, it was, I was like, just, it was like the France thing. I was like, it's the fucking sound of music. The whole set. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah it was, was like wearing, the Alps. It was around the Alps. Yeah, it looked like the Alps. Even yeah. what she was wearing, I was like, is this the fucking? I know she's rubbing those bells right and all. Yeah, and the dogs, two German shepherds. Oh, well. class man. Uh, but the fucking that's... yeah, I was like, surely after they put the fire out and they seen it, they would have been like, that's not a human body. Yeah. Like that's a mannequin. Where's he gone? What? Why did it take so long? Yeah, as soon as he left his body and went, oh, hang on yeah. a second. Like, maybe not. This consistency the, isn't know, right. The charred remains, you maybe wouldn't notice it instantly. You'd sort of just, you wouldn't make the connection. Yeah. But, you know, when the people go in to lift his body, the morticians and all, be like, hang on a second. Yeah, we, a fucking... we have dealt with many dead bodies, but this <laughs> one's a little different. We'll have to leave it a few days it was and the then 80s, investigate I mean. properly. It was the <laughs> It was this bad um, time. So I Betty fucks off with the director. Oh, to like this lovely Man, picturesque part of the. That whole... We think it's the Alps. Yeah, possibly. Sound yeah. of music, country. Yeah. Uh, but like that whole thing, because there's a bit kind of early on. So after the first murder happens, and she's running out, running out in the streets in the rain, kind of shouting for help, and she bumps into the director and asks, and the first mm-hmm. time you're kind of a bit like, "Is it you? Are you the mm-hmm. bad guy?" Mm-hmm. But then he kind of takes her home, and then he's like, you know. Do you want me to stay? And she's like, Do you not have somebody at home waiting for you? And he's like, I guess I do. Better go home. And then he does. We see a scene where he's like with this woman. She's like, she's like, You want to fuck her, don't you? And he's like, Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I took like four flights to get here. Like, what the fuck? But then he ends up with hurt Betty anyway in the end. And I was like, uh-huh. So where did what? Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if they were definitely in a relationship, but they sort of, yeah. They kind of sort of tease that it was a bit of an open relationship. Yeah. So, um, but no, he definitely wants to buck Betty. Oh yeah. Um, I think everybody wanted to buck Betty in that film. To be fair, like any man that seemed to interact with her was all like, <laughs> I know. I know. And the killer really wanted it like to psychotic levels. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Um, but um, then we get that awesome scene where she's running. She so she goes out the house, mm-hmm. and obviously he hears the news report, and he's like. Betty, run! That's run, right, Betty. from this fucking cottage window, just like, he's still alive! And then she just runs. She just, she just falls. no questions. Yeah. Just no, uh-huh. hang on, what? What are Man, you talking about? Just, all right, see. There's that one, but because uh, there's, she sees the two German shepherds kind of run, and she doesn't really question that. She's just kind of like, hmm. yeah. but then afterwards, so after, we'll, we'll talk about, about like how their little interaction with the killer and stuff, and, but, it's at the very end. It's, it's kind of it was the one kind of line that kind of annoyed me because it was a bit like, Ooh. it reminded me of Taken Three. So in Taken Three, at the very end of the film, the, uh, the policeman says to Liam Neeson, the police chief is like, "Oh, I knew you didn't do it because no man would leave his bagels to get cold because there was like warm bagels in his house whenever they when the police arrived there." And that kind of happened in this because mm. she's like, oh, I knew you were here because I seen your dogs. There could have been anybody's fucking dog. I know. Like, you're, you're a tourist. Like, you're just yeah, here for. How do you know there are just wild German shepherds running around the Alps? I know. <laughs> like, just, I I'm was thinking, like. Yeah, there was two, and they were sort of play fighting, but they were running. Yeah, they like, were just having a good time. Also, two play fighting. Having yeah. a lovely time. Yeah, but somehow she knew they were police dogs. Uh, well, I well, German dogs. shepherds. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, obviously, you know. So, uh, um, but yeah, that, but she's that... still being chased by the killer. Yeah, she could still die at any moment here. Yeah. So you know, whatever. <laughs> but then she does the whole. Oh, you were right. Yeah. I'm glad you I'm, killed him. I'm like my mother. Let's be together. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing with the mother. So maybe I missed it. Maybe I wasn't constrained enough. But so the killer. Did the killer know where Ma? Was the killer the person that was killing the woman in front of her ma? Or yeah. so he was the same but he said he only looked to be around the same age as her. Like he wasn't an owl boy. All right enough. I which I kinda really like, like that's in my brain. I was like, wait, are you like are you like hmm. a relative of the killer? Are you like a long lost relative of the fat? Like what? What's your, but then I was kind of like, but is it going to be him? But then he's not, like, he's he's a young-looking, handsome man until he gets cyborg ripped out. Well, he's still yeah. kind of handsome, except he's got, like, a big scabby eye hole. Um, but he doesn't seem to cover up. Which he doesn't, no, he's just kind of walking about. It's like, like, mate, like, that's definitely getting infected. Like, infected. Yeah. Put a fucking eye patch on it. Yeah. Um, but puts a, puts uh, he a just sort of turns, he turns into, like, a do wide fucking no, but then he's like, oh, okay, baby. And okay. he's following her. And yeah. then, obviously, like, literally 50 cops come out of nowhere yeah. and all jump on him because, you know, two or three isn't enough to take down this guy. No. And literally, there's about 20 guys all pointing guns at him. Yeah. And, they, and he's just They'll like, just come out oh, of the fucking woods away. with their dogs. Like, <laughs> why is there so many of them pointing guns at him? Like, just send in three or four guys take them down, hand come up, handcuff them and pull them away. Yeah. It's very it's, bizarre. Like yeah. he's not then, like a machine. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the two cops are just like, we've been on his trail since he left, uh, since he left the, the city. Uh, we're glad we caught up to him now. And it's like, it's all really convenient. Yeah. And then she's <laughs> like, I knew you were there. That's when she reveals yeah. that she yeah. knew. Because of the dogs. Because, because the dogs. of dogs. Yeah. Of course. Cause you know, only cops have German shepherds. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose they were in such a remote part of the country, you know. Mm. She she made the connection. And she saw a helicopter as well. That's what it was. Oh uh, yeah, saw the helicopter. helicopter of course. In, yeah. yeah. But yeah, and then how is it? How we is get it she this because she doesn't she kill him. She get no. Does she, does she not kill him in the end, or she fucking attacks him anyway? Like he does end up getting fucking. Does she not give him a wee slap or something? Because he's not on the ground, like, whenever... And no, then, because they asked, the cops asked her, like, what What did he say to you? And she's like, oh, nothing. And then we get this wee monologue about how she's different from everyone yeah, else. Yeah, it's and... a weird, weird end. That was, I actually have this written down. It's a very strange she way they wrap it up. Yeah, yeah it's weird, man. Um, yeah. she, hu- she literally hugs flowers. Yeah. Like, she's crawling through flowers, and she's like... Oh, I'm not. I'm not like my mother. I'm like this, and I'm free, and all this, and I'm like. I'm one with nature. Is that yeah. was that a theme? Like I didn't really yeah, make the connection. There's, that, there's kind of that moment. I think like whenever we first get to see her, like dreams, her flashback nightmare scenarios, like at first it is just women like afraid, but then there's the woman who is like being murdered, and then her mom who's tied up, who is kind of scared, but also kind of a bit like. He's sort of a race. I thought uh, that too. Yeah, she was a bit. Kind of... But again, that's not something that's really tie that, tie explored. That tire. Yeah, it's like not something that's overly explored yeah. until the end when she's like, "Oh, I'm not like my mother." And it's yeah, like, I mean, do you mean, like into murder or yeah. like Just, yeah that that whole thing and the killer. Yeah, the killer. Kink, I was like, he's you know he's, that's her kink. Yeah, her, like the killers. The killer looked too young to be murdering folk in front of her ma when she was just a mm. child to then come and be like having a pure murder crush on Betty. I don't know. That bit sorry that threw me a wee bit. I still really enjoyed the film. I still mm-hmm. thought it fucking looked the part, sounded the part. Oh yeah. Uh, the whole amazing. narrative, the whole who did it murder stuff, great. Um but just some of the kind of like subtexts and stuff were a bit a bit kind of wishy washy. It felt a wee bit unnecessary. And then yeah. At the, just at that incident, I was just like, "What?" She's literally crawling through flowers, and then when she frees the lizard, which just some, seemed weird. Um, I suppose the whole thing is that she was a prisoner to this to to this guy, but yeah. um, like 
she literally just hugs flowers. She goes, oh, she goes down and hugs flowers. And you're like, okay, strange, strange. But yeah, I mean, fantastic film. I'm really happy that you liked it because I kind of was yeah. coming in this going, fuck, is he going to like this or not? Uh, Imagine if we'd had a, a, a like a twofer of me just uh, being like, fuck this. Oh, it's fucking shake, uh, shake fuck dubbing, this. shake kills and shake this. No, no, I had, I had a good time. The kills good, were fucking good. great. The dubbing, I, I, again, I had no issues with the dubbing. I wasn't kind of being snooty about it. I was going into it just being like, nope, this is of its time. And I fucking yeah. love it. I love pure... it. It's It's got a charm to it. And... Yeah. It's pure I think, panto. I um, think uh, my favorite dubbing was of the the big guy at the start with the goatee. Yeah, I the, it like, just the, it just the, didn't like, connect. Agent dude. Yeah. yeah, it just didn't connect. The voice didn't connect to his look. Yeah, and when that happens, it's amazing. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so big fan of opera, and I, yeah, I think yeah, we exactly. need to start watching a wee bit more. I think this is this is now opened. Now. This has opened uh, a doorway that Good. will I'll now venture forth into and yeah. see what else is out Happy there. Days. Okay. Uh, well, that's all the time we have tonight. We've we've talked a little bit longer than we usually do. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Please let us know your uh, thoughts on opera, uh, Dario Argento, and Giallo in general, and what other films do you think Danny should be watching? Um, I'll obviously be uh, sending him some uh, of my picks but we'd love to hear your favourite gel films too so as always please go and follow us on Twitter and Instagram uh, at the Fright Club NI and f- uh, go and like the Facebook page as well uh, and check out the website at www.thefrightclubni.com yeah. and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and then hit the wee bell icon so you get notified when we post new videos every two weeks yes that'd be great so um that's all the time we have this week uh we will be back in two weeks for another mm-hmm. episode of monday night frights as always stay safe take care <gasps> stabby 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 find a scent of nip <laughs> bye